today the topic I have for you is gaslighting, the narcissist's favorite tool. So I'm going to talk about what gaslighting is, why narcissists and other manipulators use it, what some common gaslighting phrases are, how this affects you as the target over time, and finally I'll give you some tips to deal with gaslighting so you can save your sanity. Now, gaslighting is a covert, aggressive way of distorting another person's perception of reality to the point that that person questions their sanity or their memory. Gaslighting is crazy making. It makes you think that you're actually going crazy. Gaslighting is a way of hiding the abuse. Gaslighting is lying with a goal. The motive behind the gaslighting is to make you think that you're crazy or that your memory doesn't work right, so you can't trust yourself and your perceptions of reality. This means you'll defer to the abuser for an account of what's real. So slowly over time, the abuser becomes the authority over your life. Now, gaslighting takes place in relationships, like one-on-one -on -one relationships. It takes place in friendships, in family, in work. You'll see gaslighting on the news. You'll hear gaslighting coming from politicians, corporate shills, cult leaders, advertising commercials, etc. There's a great book called The Sociopath Next Door by Dr. Martha Stout. And she interviewed a lot of incarcerated sociopaths and then asked them about gaslighting. And while most of them didn't know the term gaslighting, when she explained it to them, they all said that they love to do this. So Dr. Stout concluded that gaslighting is their favorite tool in their box of tactics. I saw that with my own mother the day that I confronted her on the abuse over two years ago. She flaunted how much she loved gaslighting in front of my dad and I. Gaslighters are compulsive liars. So why do they use gaslighting? They will use gaslighting to gain power and control over others. They will use gaslighting to convince you that they're right and your perception of what happened is wrong. They will use gaslighting to dismiss your feelings, your needs, your perceptions of reality. They will use gaslighting to minimize or to erase the abuse that took place. They will use gaslighting to play the victim. They will use gaslighting to evade responsibility. They will use gaslighting to fabricate conversations or events that never happened. They will use gaslighting to renege on an agreement or promise that they previously made. They will use gaslighting to make you feel like you're crazy or like something is really wrong with you. Gaslighters will say things like, I didn't say that. That didn't happen. It's not a big deal. You said... And then they'll fill that in with something that you never said. They'll tell you you're crazy or you're paranoid when you start to question things. They'll tell you you're unhinged when you start to emotionally react. They'll tell you you're mentally unstable for the same reasons. You're overreacting. You're hypersensitive. They will tell you so-and-so said something about you which never happened just to make you feel like that person is against you or doesn't like you. They'll tell you everyone thinks that you're, and they'll make something up just to make you feel afraid to speak up. The really, really covert ones will tell you things like, no, no, my love, I didn't mean it that way. I just meant I'm concerned about you and I just want the best for you. Those are the really tricky ones because on the surface, they look so plausible. They'll tell you things like, it was just a joke. That's the more overt type. They'll tell you things like, I only did that because you abandoned me when you went out with your friends one night this week. They'll tell you, you must have dreamt that or I must have dreamt that. They'll tell you, you seem to have a problem with for example, if the gaslighter is continuously late and you're upset about that because it feels like disrespectful to your time, which it is, and the gaslighter says to you, you seem to have a problem with time, right? So they're going to use these kinds of phrases. Do you see how each and every one of these phrases 
you know, it could sound normal, some of them, but then at the same time, they're used to completely distort your perception of reality. They're used to make you think that you are a certain way that you're not. They're used to control you. They're used to get the gaslighter out of trouble. So how does gaslighting affect you as the target over time? The gaslighting creates the effects of confusion, brain fog, self-doubt, disorientation, paranoia, fear, terror, keeping the silence, feeling like you're losing your mind, making you feel vulnerable, making it difficult to make judgments and decisions, feeling like you're always apologizing, you're always second guessing your own memory, feeling a sense of false guilt, feeling like you aren't good enough feeling misunderstood, feeling lonely, believing that the, the abuser, believing in what the abuser is saying over what other people are saying or what you think that other people feel or even what your own perceptions are or feelings are. Gaslighting can drive you to the point that you have a nervous breakdown. It can make you then in the future have like this compulsion for clarifying accuracy. So if somebody tells you a story and they say Tuesday, and then later they're talking about thing and they say Wednesday, you're going to be like, whoa, 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 you said Tuesday before. Now, did you mean Tuesday or did you mean Wednesday? Because it can be really important for you to clarify details about reality because of all that training in gaslighting. There's this woman, uh, her name is Arielle Lev, Lev, Levy, I'm not sure how she pronounces her name, L-E-V-E. She wrote a childhood memoir called An Abbreviated Life about growing up with her narcissistic mother on the Upper West Side of New York, a very privileged life. Her mother partied with Andy Warhol and other big names like that. And she wrote about the horrible abuses that she went through. And she described in a lot of her interviews about the book that the erasure of the abuse was worse than the abuse. So if you've been through this, you know exactly what she's talking about. So the good news is that gaslighting only works if you don't realize what's happening. But once you catch on, it doesn't work anymore. So I have some tips for you to deal with gaslighting. First, notice the inconsistencies between what a person says and what they do or what they say one day and what they say another day. Use your ability to feel, to sense if something feels off or not quite right. Validate your intuition first before comparing versions of reality with someone else, right? Don't just automatically defer to what someone else says or their perception of reality. Write things down so you don't forget. Record conversations if you need to. If too many of these kinds of conversations are going on, the person's denying what they said or did, maybe you need to start recording those conversations. Go get a reality check from someone outside the situation. Now, when you're really certain what happened, own your reality. Speak up with conviction about your perception of reality and notice the other person's response. Don't try to rationalize with the person once you realize they're gaslighting you. You can't rationalize with the person like that. Don't try to get a gaslighter to take responsibility for what they're doing. The whole reason they're doing it is to avoid responsibility. Opt out of any unnecessary interactions with gaslighters and when possible, cut them out of your life entirely because they are putting your sanity at risk. Reprogram your self-talk to remind yourself what reality is when those doubts start to creep in. You start to doubt yourself or you hear the voice of the gaslighter in your head trying to confuse you. Keep in mind, not all disagreements about perceptions of reality are gaslighting. Okay, it could happen that two people have different perceptions of reality. For example, when you consider eyewitnesses of crimes and events, notice how sometimes it really differs. You know, what one person saw, another person didn't see. They saw it differently. So things can sometimes differ from one window of perception to another. However, if you notice this is a pattern, if you notice that many of these situations are happening over and over again, and you keep feeling like something is off, trust your intuition. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.